Guys, before we get started milling up this dimensional lumber today, I want to give a huge shout out to Mike Morgan with Outdoors with the Morgans and Nathan with Out of the Woods. Two great channels that show a whole lot of sawmilling videos and they were part of the inspiration for me getting my sawmill. Hope you guys enjoy. How do I talk my wife into letting me buy a wood miser? <laughs> hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And today we got a big old pile of lumber and we got a nice big old sawmill. So this is a Woodmiser LT40. And today we're gonna teach you how to talk your wife into letting you get a Woodmiser. <laughs> so what we have here are four logs. They're four pine logs right over here that I picked up out of the woods. They were windfalls on the neighbor's property and I just asked them, hey, Mind if I get those pine trees? Sure. So today we're going to take those pine trees and we're going to turn them into cash money. We're going to turn those into 2x4s and 2x6s, dimensional construction type lumber. True 2x4s, true 2x6s. Not, uh, not the size lumber that you buy at the store, but the true stuff, the big stuff, the heavy stuff. So come along as we push these guys up here, load them up on the mill and run off some lumber and show your wife how this can be a money-making machine for you and your projects around your farm or your property. All right, woo! I ain't afraid of work, I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life, times like this. Freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. So, what you need to know, these are southern yellow pine in other words they are either a loblolly pine or we call them a virginia pine they're virginia pine logs they are not the most desirable tree so when they grow up they get about this size which is about 12 to 14 inches and they just start toppling over like dominoes and we get the domino effect they fall out in the field they fall out in the road and but all these logs were windfalls they fell due to a windstorm we recently had we have some eight foot logs and we have some longer logs. The Woodmiser LT40 that we're gonna be using today will handle up to, and it's an extra wide model, it'll handle up to a 36 inch wide and up to a 21 foot long piece, okay? So we're gonna be offloading our lumber intelligently onto our little tractor right here, little T, our TYM 254. We'll have the pallet forks all set up right here and that's where we'll offload our lumber and we'll take it and put it in our lumber stack. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and fire up the LT40 and let it get warmed up so we can mill up some lumber. Log ox. This is our can hook that we use for rolling the logs up onto the mill. So guys, there are all matter of tools that you're going to need when you get ready to fire your mill up, you're getting ready to start it up. You need to make sure you're lubricated all the way down through here. We use a little automatic transmission fluid. You need a chainsaw. Now you don't need the biggest chainsaw on earth. This is a little steel MSL 140C, MSA 140C. Great little chainsaw. And what we're using this chainsaw for is to nip off little knobs on the end of these logs. So. We'll use our cant hook, this is our log ox cant hook. We'll use that to roll the logs up onto the mill, then the hydraulics will do the rest. However, we'll need to cut off some of the little sticks that are on the outside edges of these logs real quick. And then we'll get it up on the mill. Guys, if you don't cut off those little knobs, they will interfere with your mill and you'll hit something and break something. So you gotta cut those little knobs off and it helps to turn the log with those knobs cut off. Contact.
fail in this tree. Ah. So you think about everything you can possibly <laughs> think about when you cut a tree like this. And what I found out just now was I got a nail and this tree I cut off because I was worried about it maybe having nails in it. That's the nail right there. And I heard my blade go zink. And I was like, man, what in the world is going on here? And that's it. I cut the top off of a nail. I may have to do a blade change. These are the brakes. So you can run a metal detector over top of your logs. I pretty much had no reason to believe this log had a nail in it, but it does. So we're gonna slide it down here and we're gonna cut that end off. Bummer, total bummer. Not a very good selling point today, is it? <laughs> you live and you learn. This is what happens. This is called a cant, a big square cant. That's it, here's a close up. That's the nail. That's a bummer. You can see the discoloration in the wood. So I went up to the shop and I grabbed another blade. We're gonna have to do a quick blade change. Not really a whole lot to it. All we're doing is taking off one blade and putting on another blade. But I'll show you how we do it real quick. Very, very simple. And then we'll get back to cutting. That is a total bummer that I hit a nail, man. Thims the brakes sometimes. So it would probably behoove me to go ahead and purchase myself a nice metal detector to run over every log. But that blade can probably be resharpened. All right, in order to change the blade, we pull a couple pins. Pop a couple covers off. We'll loosen, there's a handle over here on the other side. You can hear all the tension coming out the blade there. Back that way off. Now our blade's in here and it's loose. You wanna do this with the machine off and the key out of it. So nobody boo-boos on you, gets you hurt. Let's remove these covers. Put them in a safe place. One cover here. This cover flips down, just like so. That's it, two covers. Now you wanna make note which way your blade is cutting, your cutting edges. They're going this way, okay? There you go, old blade is out. Here's our new blade. Pinch it together, run it right through the middle here. Get everything all lined up. Make sure everything is squared up with the back side of that pulley. And your blades go through some guides right here. And we'll tighten it all up. Snug everything down, put our pins back in, and we're ready to rock and roll again. We want to tighten our blade to a tension of 3,000 PSI. And the way we do this is there's a little gauge right here, and we'll just turn that knob. We'll get it on up to about 2,800. We'll start the machine up, engage the blade, and we'll keep a close eye on that meter right there, and we'll keep the tension up, because as this new blade breaks in, it's going to stretch a little bit. Let's finish sawing up. This is going to be two by eights. So when we hit that nail, it made the blade go zoop. It kind of dipped in. So we're gonna have to waste a little bit of lumber here. We're gonna make two by sixes out of this cant right here. A cant is a squared off log.
money in the bank right there. So this is log number two, and log number two just netted us eight two by four by eights. True two by four by eights. Isn't that a beautiful board right there? Nice. Cha-ching, 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 the cash register. Okay, ladies, this is 10 foot two by fours, two actual two by fours. All right, so that's 14 bucks right there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times 14. This mill will pay for itself. And you don't have to buy the LT40. You don't have to get the big dog on, on the block. We got the big one because we've got big trees here. And most of the time I'll be running this mill and offloading on my own. But that's it. Good investment. Especially if you've got land and you got trees going to waste. This is gonna build barn. Our last log, we're gonna make beams. A couple beams to span across where we're gonna do a lean-to on our old tobacco barn. Now you might be asking yourself, is this it? Is this all? Now you could sell this just like it is, or you could sticker it and dry it yourself. A two inch board is typically gonna take about two years to cure out in the barn, or however long if you've got a local kiln. This is scraps, sort of. 
So this will be cut into one bias for stickers to go in between the stacks of lumber and that way they get airflow and they dry. If you leave them stacked like this, they're gonna mold and rot. The moisture is the problem. Make no mistake, guys, this is work. It's hard work uh, and it'll wear you out, okay? You run this mill all day, it'll wear you out. So if you're not ready to work, you think this thing's gonna do everything for you, you're dead wrong. Laying these boards out right here makes a nice platform, it makes it easier to roll this log onto the log deck. We're gonna have to unload that lumber so we can push this guy up just a little bit, get it centered on the log loaders. Got a special guest here, Stepdad Barry. Now I got a new offloader. <laughs> This is the big boy right here. This is a 16 footer and it's about 14 inches all the way through. The plan with this is to make a beam out of it and then the rest of it we're gonna make dimensional lumber. So we'll get some 16 foot two by fours and we'll have long two by four, short two by fours. So we got 10 footers, 16 footers and eight footers. And this will be a great big long beam that's gonna span the entire length of our tobacco barn where we're gonna put a lean to. This is my four inch beam right here, and then there's another two by four. So we're gonna take that two by eight and that two by eight, and we're gonna cut them into two by fours. And this is gonna be my beam for my barn. Awesome, awesome stuff, guys. So if this didn't convince you, think about all the lumber that we got. We probably milled, I don't know, $300 worth of lumber today on the wood miser. We could sell it, we could use it on the farm. It's a time saver, a money saver, and something that keeps stuff from going to waste, which is awesome. All this stuff was just gonna lay it on the forest floor and rot. So, now husbands, you have a way <laughs> to negotiate with your wife. You can make money with this thing. On the weekend, you can make five, 600 bucks, 700 bucks a day. It's awesome. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here today on the Stony Ridge Farm. I hope to see you again. Pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. See you next time. We gotta load that big beam. I'm glad he showed up. Yo, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! That's a big boy right there. <laughs> In case you stuck around after the credits, these are the stickers. They're just one by one stickers. You wanna use the same species sticker for the same species lumber. So pine lumber gets a pine sticker. Oak gets an oak sticker. Ash gets an ash sticker. That's it, we'll cut these into four foot lengths and put them every 16 inches. See you next time.